This is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make these absolutely adorable um, bunny and bear purses. Um, so the main part of the pattern is exactly the same. The only difference is in the ears. Um, obviously the bunny has longer ones. Um, other than that, the faces are the same. I just used a different color yarn for the noses. Um, you can mix them up however you'd like, but um, I like that you can do two different animals. Like for my girls, they are always getting their, they're always getting their things mixed up. So I like having a bear for one and a bunny for the other. Um, I used Rara Ra Raffia yarn for this particular pattern from Wool and the Gang. Um, and you could also use cotton. I think this yarn or this pattern would work up really well and be really sweet um, in a cotton yarn or um, some of the like Maker Home Deco yarns um, by Bernat. That would be really cool for this. Um, also, what's that? The New Wave yarn um, by Wool and the Gang is really great. That would also work well for this pattern. Basically any, really any yarn would work that's a medium weight, um, but I just like things that look kind of summery, but this would also be kind of a cute purse for winter. So maybe even um, a more wintry fiber would work as well. So I'm gonna walk you through um, the, the gist of this pattern, the basics, um, but you will need the written pattern as well. So you need to head to my website, lakesideloops.com, and there you can find a free version of this pattern that you can follow along with here, or you can also find links to download the pattern for a small fee from Etsy or Ravelry. And the advantage there is that it's a printable, savable version, there are no ads, um, it's e a bit easier to follow along with than the website, but the website one is free. So, uh, you will need the written pattern. You're also going to need, of course, your crochet hook. I used a four millimeter, um, a darning needle. That is to add the face details. Um, and for the face, I used um, some lightweight yarn. You could also use embroidery floss, um, really even any weight yarn, even if you used medium weight yarn, because I actually doubled back. This is sort of two rows of this yarn. So, really, Anything medium or below, I think would work in terms of yarn weight or thread weight. Um, and then of course, you will need some scissors. So let's get started. All right, so this purse is made in sections. So we make, first we make the two circles. So I've got a completed bunny one here. So we, first we do the circle that goes in the front, the circle that goes in the back. Um, we will make this side section, which runs along here in between the two circles. Then we will make the ears and the strap. Then I will show you how to put it all together and how to put the face on one of your circles. All right, so for our first round, we're going to start by making the circle, the front and back of the bag, the round circle. So we're gonna start by chaining two. And now we're going to work six single crochets into the second chain So I've skipped ahead and I finished my six single crochets and now I'm going to join into my first single crochet with a slip stitch. And this is how we're going to join all of our rounds. I'm going to make the smallest slip stitch that I can without ripping the paper, the yarn, <laughs> just like that. And then we're going to make a very small chain one to begin our next round. And now we're going to work our next round into that same stitch that we just joined into, which is the first stitch from round one or our previous round. This is how I'm going to join all of my rounds. You can do it however you'd like, but I find with this method, um, you get an almost seamless look to your piece. You can see the seams right there, but overall it's not highly noticeable and I find it's pretty straight. It doesn't slant a whole lot. So it's just a tight slip stitch into your first stitch from that round, and then a very small chain one, and then work your first stitch for your next round into that same stitch, the same stitch that you slip stitched into, which is the first stitch from the previous round. I hope that makes sense. 
So for round two, we're going to be working two single crochets into each stitch around. Again, we're going to work our first two single crochets into this stitch, which is the one that we joined, uh, and it's the first stitch from our previous round. But before I start that, beginning with this round, we're going to start holding a second strand of yarn behind our round. And what I do is I just reach into the middle of my yarn and grab the other end, so the, the middle end, or if you've already been working from the middle, you can start um, with a strand from the outside, or if you have two balls of yarn, that works too, of course. Um, but if you're just working with one ball, I use the outside yarn first, and then I reach inside and grab the middle uh, to hold this behind my round. So we're just gonna hold it behind our work, and as we go around, we're just gonna crochet over top of it. And what this is going to do is it's going to make our bag firmer. It's gonna keep it from being as stretchy. Um, so it'll be just a little bit stiffer, a little bit more solid. So see, I'm just working over top of it all the way around. And we're just gonna keep carrying this around with us as we continue to build up our circle. All right, so you're going to make two circles. So once you finish making your first one, then you're going to follow the instructions all over again to make a second one. And then we're going to move on to the side section. All right, so I'm just gonna show you with the bunny purse. So we've already created our circle for the front, our circle for the back, and now we're going to make what I call the side section, which is just this one long piece that runs all around the side. We're going to work it up and then we're going to attach it at the end once we assemble everything together. So to begin, we're gonna chain 49. So I've skipped ahead here and I've chained 49 and now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And we're gonna single crochet all the way down the chain Working a single crochet into each chain. So once you finish following the instructions for the side section, you should have something that looks like this. And I will show you how to attach it in just a minute. But first, we are going to move on and make the ears. All right, now for the ears, you have two options. Um, I've included instructions on how to make the bunny ears and how to make the bare ears. I'm not going to walk you through it because if you've made it this far then you should be able to handle this. It's just crocheting in rows um, and being able to put multiple stitches into a single stitch. Um, so if you've made it this far and you've done the circle and you've done the side piece you'd be able to do these ears. If you have any trouble of course don't hesitate to email me. So for the strap it's just a basic chain um, and you can go longer or shorter than I did. Um, I chained 85 and that seemed to be a good length for my six-year-old. I feel like the purse is a, maybe a tad on the shorter end in terms of the strap for my six-year-old. She's about average height. Um, so if you have a child who's you know three, four, five, or six that would probably fit them well. If you are making it for an older child, like for my eight-year-old, for example, um, I'd probably want the strap a little bit longer. So you can just um, measure according to your own kiddo, the, your own little one in your life. Um, but once I've done my last chain, what I do to finish it off, I'm just gonna leave myself a bit of an end here because this is how we're gonna attach the strap to our bag. And then I just pull it through like that. All right, so that got me started. Um, again, I want it to be centered along this seam. And so I think this is a little too close to the middle, whereas this is over a little more. So I'm going to actually work from here over to here. So I'm just gonna bring my, oh, my needle up through again, and I'm gonna cross over to here. There, that will be the top of my nose. And then from here down, down one row around and to the middle will be 
the bottom of my triangle. Just like that. And again, I'm just going to keep going back and forth and I might actually um, work from sort of in here down to the bottom of my triangle to sort of fill it in. And from over here down to the bottom to fill it in and then across the front a couple of more times. And once you have it all filled in, there's no wrong way to do this, um, then you just secure it again along the back, tie it in a knot along the back, and then from here I'll show you how to make the eyes. Okay, now for the eyes I did essentially the same thing. So I started, if the circle in the middle counts as one, one, two, three, four. So between the fourth and fifth rows, I started here and I went over and down one row, over and down one row, straight across one row, and then over and up one row, over and up one row. So all together I have five uh, stitches, I guess we would call them. Um, so I went down and then back across in the same spaces to make it a nice thick line and then I came back and did the eyelashes so I just started here and went down 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 and I did the same on the other side so I just started at the same point over and down one over and down one straight across over and up one over and up one and then went back and did or sorry then went back this way and then went back and did the three eyelashes and again, you can do this however you want. Um, it doesn't look very pretty in the back, but no one will see that because it'll be in the middle of our bag. All right, so to attach the side section, um, we're gonna start at the very bottom and we're going to count 24 stitches this way. So starting right here, that's one, two, three, and so on, all the way until we get to number 24. I've inserted my hook into the 24th stitch and I'm going to insert my hook into the last stitch of my side section. I'm going to grab some new yarn here, some fresh yarn, and we're going to be slip stitching the side section and our face together. So we're just going to work all the way around working a slip stitch, working a nice loose slip stitch, not too tight, but we're going to be going first into the face and then into the side section and grab our yarn, pull it through both, and then pull it through the loop on our hook. And we're just gonna do that all the way around, and I'll come back later and secure these. And that will attach this side section to the front part of our bag, and then we're gonna continue on and attach the ears, and then we'll attach the back section and the straps. All right, so now that I've gone all the way around and I've finished attaching my side section to the face, I'm going to attach my ears next. Now, for both the bunny and bear ears, we're going to be working seven slip stitches and seven stitches um, into our face. So I'll show you. The first stitch would go in here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But don't sweat this too much. If you feel like you can only fit five in, that's okay. If you feel like you can fit six in, that's okay too. Just keep track of it because you wanna do the same thing over here. Also, I don't think it matters which side of your ears face forward. I prefer this side, but I do think that both sides should be the same. So whichever side you decide to have facing forward, make sure you put the same, it put it the same way for the second ear. And um, one thing I didn't note when we were making the ears in the video tutorial, um, but that I will mention now, is that with the bunny ears, I did hold a second strand of yarn behind um, as I was making them because I wanted these to be stiffer and they're taller. The bare ones, I didn't feel it was necessary. I didn't hold a second strand of yarn and I think they they stand up well and it, it's just not necessary, unless you want to. <laughs> but um, for the sake of not wasting the precious, beautiful raffia yarn, um, I don't think you need to with the bare ears. 
So I'm just gonna hold, continue on using this same yarn and I'm just gonna hold my ear sort of behind my round. I'm gonna work, put my hook into the next stitch of the face and then the first stitch of the ear. I'm gonna grab my yarn and pull it through both to make a slip stitch. Now I'm gonna go into this next stitch over on the face and the next hole I can find in the ear, grab the yarn again, pull it through both, and complete my slip stitch. And we're just gonna keep going until we run out of ear. Now I'm going to continue to slip stitch across the top until I only have seven stitches left and that's when I will grab my second ear and slip stitch that on to the top of the bare head. All right, so now we've attached our side section to our face, we've attached our ears to the top. We're going to flip it over and we're going to repeat the same process um, minus the ears for our back circle. So we're going to count 24 from the bottom. So you can see where I did my slip stitch here. So one, two, three, all the way over to 24, and that will be our starting point for attaching to here. Just that will make sure that our seam is centered in the middle at the bottom. All right, so now I've attached my front and my back, my side, my ears. Um, we are going to attach the strap. So to attach the side straps, um, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to how I do it. I just tie a knot. <laughs> um, so you can attach those however you want. Um, and that is it, my friends. We are done. Um, so I would love to see your finished pieces online. So if you post any pictures, please tag me. It's at Lakeside Loops. Um, I can't wait to see what yarns you use, what colors you use, and I think it would be really sweet. I think there are so many ways that you could sort of decorate them and make them your own, like adding maybe some crochet flowers around the ears, like a little flower headband, um, even lining it. I told my girls I was gonna put a zipper in the top for them, um, which if I do do that, I said I would, so I have to now. <laughs> so when I do that, I will try to remember to do a video tutorial in case you'd like to do that as well. And I'm even thinking about lining it um, with some fabric so that things don't fall through um, the little holes. They tend to collect a lot of little tiny treasures when we're out and about. Uh, rocks being the main one uh, and sometimes they have little beads and things so I think lining it would be really sweet so if I do decide to do that um, I'll make a video tutorial for that as well and that's about it I really hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email me it's lakesideloops at gmail.com thank you so much for following along I would love if you would subscribe to my youtube channel um, and I would also love if you would check out my website lakesideloops.com um, I'm trying to build um, a blog and I'm new to all of this and so all of your support is so very much appreciated so thank you